pay money to the school to help support them. And of course, they put on little benefit meetings and things, you know, go out to a football game and this and that. So they had designed this program for the uh, alumni engineers to come and hear Ben Rich speak. So I believe it was March 23rd, 1993. I could be off on the date, but I think it was March 23rd, 1993. We went to the Alumni Center. There were about 200 engineers there, a little cocktail reception, and then we sat down. I think we were right in the front row, and Ben did a beautiful slide presentation on his 40 years at the Skunk Works. It was all of the craft, starting with the U-2, and how he was the project engineer in charge of the SR-71, which actually promoted him, uh, or propelled him, to even end up taking over the CEO job uh, from Kelly Johnson, who was the original president CEO of the Lockheed Skunk Works, all the way up to the F-117. Uh, and then, of course, this was 10 years before, because this was 93, the F-117 had been announced, I think, in 1983, and so there's a 10-year gap. And he made a few com funny comments about the Aurora and things like that, but he intimated there was a lot of other stuff going on that he could not talk about. Um, he ended his talk with a slide of a black disc zipping off into outer space, and he ended it with these words, we now have the technology to take E.T. home. And the entire place broke up laughing. And Tom and I just looked at each other and said, did, did, he, did he really just say that? And, and are these people really not getting that what he's saying is real? And so we just kind of let it go. There was a polite Q&A session, and then the meeting ended. Well, about 20, 25 of us gathered up around him to, for a secondary, you know, post Q&A like most speakers have. And it was very polite at first, people just asking questions about his career and different things like that. Finally, one lady said, how does this, fast, how does this uh, getting ET home work? And he looks at her and he says, well, talks a little bit lower. He's trying to ignore her kind of thing. So someone else asked the same question. So finally he just said, he said, well, he said, let me ask you a question. Do you think it's possible to travel to the stars? He asked this of a particular engineer who had asked him a question about his career. And uh, the engineer said, well, I don't know. It would just take a long time to get there. He said, no, it wouldn't. We found an error in the equations, and we now know how to travel to the stars, and it won't take us a lifetime to do it. So, oh, that's pretty cool. So we started asking some more questions, right? And he just kind of dribbled out a little bit more information, a little bit more information, a little bit more information uh, about this. He went on to describe a lot of different things about his career, about how, how this works. Uh, he didn't say what the equations were. I'm assuming they're Maxwell's equations. Um, I did specifically ask that question. Uh, but when it all wound up, he, he turned around and said, I've got to go now. He started to walk out of the room. Now we're down to about five or six people at that point because most people had dribbled away. I followed him through the room and I said, Mr. Rich, Mr. Rich. And he turned around and looked at me like, like, who are you? And I said, I have a real interest in propulsion you're talking about that gets us to the stars. I said, can you tell me how it works? And he looks at me like, like, who are you again? <laughs> and he said, well, let me ask you a question. How does ESP work? And it just threw me back. I'm thinking, oh my God. I wasn't expecting a question. I was expecting him to just say something. And he said, uh, I said, I don't know, all points in space and time are connected? He said, that's how it works. Turned around, walked away. Now, I don't know if he was saying that I got the right answer or he was just saying, no, it's CSP, it's how it works. But I, I do think there's something to that. So, so three very important things. One is we have the technology to take ET home. Two is there's an error in the equations. And this is important. Uh, because if you realize that stealth is all built around a Russian mathematician's equations, and that's how they figured out how to do stealth. Now they've figured out through equations how to do greater than light travel. I, I've been corrected, faster than light travel. And then finally, uh, that the way ESP works is the same way that this technology works. Uh, in 1976, I've got a flyer from the School of Engineering inviting me to a lecture by Ben Rich. Ben Rich was the director of Lockheed Skunk Works for 16 years. He oversaw a number of USAPs that were secretly managed at the Skunk Works, including, most notably, the development of the F-117 stealth fighter. Ben shared a slide set of about 40 slides of different things, starting with the U-2 spy plane, going all the way up to the uh, stealth fighter at that time, mentioning that uh, he couldn't talk about the other secret stuff. But when he ended his talk, was he had a slide of a black disc zipping off into outer space and he ended his, his talk with these words we now have the technology to take et home so you have to have vision and you have to have the guts and the courage to go out past the steps and do something of any value and we have to go past our grasp uh, and we asked him questions about it you know what did you mean when you said we have the technology to take et home 
Ben shared three major things that I think are, are worthy of research by uh, researchers worldwide at this point in time. Uh, the first was we've somehow figured out how to do interstellar travel already. It's known. The second point he made was that there was an error in the equations. My suspicion is it's probably Maxwell's equations for electromagnetic magnetic theory. The third thing he said was, how does ESP work? And I was really kind of startled because I didn't know what to say, but I blurted out, I don't know, all points in time and space are connected. And he looked me back in the eye and he said, that's how it works. A flyer in the mail from the UCLA School of Engineering on about, you know, February time frame of 1993. And in it, it had that Ben Rich would be speaking on the UCLA campus to the engineering alumni and please RSVP. I shared that notice with my friend Tom Keller, who also graduated from UCLA Engineering School about 10 years prior to myself. And Ben being the past CEO and chairman of Lockheed Skunk Works was like a dream come true. So I said, Tom, you won't believe I got this letter in the mail. You know, let's go see it. Here's the flyer. But we showed up, it was in the Alumni Center and about 200 engineers were there, a polite little buffet, and we sat down for a presentation where Ben took us through his 40 years at Lockheed Skunk Works. Starting out with the U-2 spy plane, he did it all on slides, through the SR-71, which made him famous, all the way up through the F-117, which had been announced like 10 years prior to this date. It, I think it had come out in the early 80s. And so there was a 10-year gap of nothing there. And he kind of alluded to the Aurora, but he kind of joked about it, right? But when he finished his talk, there was a, a slide of a black disc zipping off into outer space. And he ended the talk with these words, we now have the technology to take E.T. home. And the entire place busted up laughing. And Tom and I are looking at each other thinking, D -d don't they understand what this man just said? About 25 of us ran up to see Ben, right? As normal speakers, you have people gather around and speak at the end. And we started asking questions, you know, polite questions at first, but then finally some lady said, tell us about this technology that goes to the stars. But he said, let me ask you something. He says, do you think it's possible to travel to the stars? And the engineer took like three steps back, like, why are you asking me this question? And he said, well, yeah, it'll just take a long time to get there. Ben Rich said, no, it won't. There's an error in the equations. And we figured out what it was, and we know, now know how to do it. But then it, he abruptly looks at his watch and says, I've got to go. And he starts walking out of the thing. And I start following him out to his car. And I said, Mr. Rich, Mr. Rich. And he turns around and looks at me like, who are you? you know? And I said, Hi, I'm Jan Harzan. I said, I, I'm alumni. I really appreciate your talk. You did a great job. I said, you said some very interesting things. I said, I've always had a fascination with propulsion systems. I said, can you tell me anything about how this propulsion system works that goes to the stars? He said, well, let me ask you a question. How does ESP work? Pulled the first thing that came into my mind. I said, I don't know. All points in space and time are connected? He said, that's how it works. He turned around and walked away. Now, I don't know if he was saying that my answer was right, or he was just saying how it works is how ESP works. You know, so he wasn't definitive on that, but I, but I sensed that, that my answer was probably what he was looking for. And he didn't spend any time trying to explain it to me. He just said it and left.